morning. Warm greetings from the Commonwealth of Learning. I'm disappointed not to be able to join you in person, uh, but the time difference has made it uh, impossible. As you listen to this, it's half past two in the morning in Vancouver and I'm tucked up in bed, but I am with you in spirit and I wish you all the best for your conference as you discuss this very important topic of increasing access for women in TVET. I am pleased to talk to you today about challenges in achieving and progress towards equal access to TVET for women. I lead the technical and vocational skills development work at the Commonwealth of Learning. COAL is an intergovernmental organisation created by Commonwealth Heads of Government in 1987. We work across 43 Commonwealth countries representing approximately one third of the world's population. We promote the development and sharing of open learning and distance education knowledge, resources and technologies for sustainable livelihoods. As you probably know, there are 17 sustainable development goals. Today I will focus on the fourth one, quality education. And within sustainable development goal four, I am going to zero in on target 4.3, equal access to affordable, technical, vocational and higher education with an emphasis on technical and vocational education and training or TVET, which is my passion for reasons that I trust will soon become apparent. My hope today is that I will both inform and inspire you. I want to inform you about the gender inequity within access to TVET and inspire you to act or act even more to change it. Most of what I'm informing you about comes from these two publications, one from UNESCO Univoc and one from the International Labour Organization, both published this year. I've given the links so you can look at them later if you wish. Globally, we have seen some success in equal participation in education between genders, including TVET. Here you see that across different regions of the world, male and female participation is comparable. However, you can see that it is not equal between regions. For both genders, the rate is significantly lower in Africa relative to developed countries. Yes, the rate for girls and women is slightly lower in some regions, including yours, but it is not here that the significant inequity exists. The much greater difference is in what males and females choose to study, shown here by global average. Males dominate in engineering, manufacturing, construction and ICT, which you can see over on the right hand side with the high pink bar. Females dominate in education, health and welfare and social sciences. Those women who choose science, such as myself, who studied biochemistry many years ago, are more likely to choose natural sciences or mathematics. However, the story does not stop there. Studying vocational courses is not enough. The aim in studying is to move into the workforce and find decent work. Women are less likely than men to gain employment in the area in which they studied, particularly if they study STEM-related TVET, such as we saw in the last slide, for male-dominated areas. Of girls who study STEM TVET subjects in school, only 10% continue to the next level of study, compared to 60% of boys. Of those who choose to study STEM TVET after school, by 25 years old, 20% of that small number of females, as compared to 40% of the large number of males, are working in careers related to their study. Reasons for this difference include bias by employers, difficulty gaining experience, no jobs where they live, combined with an unwillingness or inability to travel, and no money to set up a workshop. And this Inequity has been exacerbated by COVID. Gains that had been made in female participation in both the labour market and TVET 
have been set back for the four reasons outlined here, which link back to the different TV choices women make, stereotypic views of women's roles at the workplace as well as in the home, and broader discrimination. Does this matter? Do we need women involved in jobs that men traditionally do? I would say a resounding yes. It matters at both the country and individual level. It matters at the country level. As we move into the fourth industrial revolution and the internet of things and increasingly rely on technology, countries, including Nigeria, need more STEM TV graduates in engineering, construction and ICT to be internationally competitive. They can't afford to only be recruiting from half the population. Also, the complex problems we need to solve to achieve the sustainable development goals require innovative solutions. And as a world, we are learning that innovation is easier and better when we bring together diverse teams. And including both genders is one way of achieving this diversity. And it also matters at the individual level. Right now, females are missing out on the more lucrative careers. The European Union estimates that on average, men earn 20% more because of these differences. I don't know what the difference would be in Nigeria, but I imagine it's similar. The difference in careers is a big factor in why women earn less than men across the globe, which leads to an inequitable society. On top of this, STEM TV careers are predicted to grow at four times the rate of other jobs because of the importance I mentioned at the country level. This means that it will become harder than it already is for women to have decent work if they do not move into these types of roles. What is driving these differences? This framework outlines factors influencing female participation or lower female participation in STEM TVET, which is where the majority of the high status, high income, high demand jobs sit. These factors are across three levels, personal, institutional, and societal. At the personal level, there is no evidence that biological differences mean that women cannot do STEM TVET jobs as well as men can. However, there are significant differences in psychological factors linked to how girls and their families perceive themselves and perceive the suitability of certain jobs for women. Examples of interventions seeking to address these factors are giving girls and sometimes their mothers the chance to play and compete using technology in a female only environment and seeking to raise parents awareness of the suitability of and opportunities within male dominated careers for their daughters. Institutional factors influencing lower female participation are similar across educational institutions and workplaces. Bias from those with influence across the recruitment, study and employment pathway. Lack of female examples and support. Inflexible training courses and study and work environments that are physically unfriendly for females. Examples of interventions being trialled to overcome these factors include training and sensitisation to help teachers understand and change their bias, girls only environments for STEM TV subjects, and TV institutions using women friendly criteria to select which institutions they will partner with or which industries they will partner with. Societal factors include deeply embedded norms regarding roles of men and women, and governments not recognising the importance of leading efforts to change these perceptions at the national level. Some countries are running national campaigns to try to change societal views and developing national strategies to try to increase female participation in STEM-related TV and closer to home. Cole and Kappa have just agreed to work together on an intervention of our own, which will involve you. 
We want to build on the great work that YT chapters such as yours are doing and co-design and develop an online learning experience to build the capability of existing chapters to continually improve what they are doing and to help institutions set up new chapters. So in conclusion, across the world, including Africa, we are making good progress in women's participation in TVET. Our focus needs to be on increasing their involvement in STEM-related TVET and better supporting them into those workplaces. Our job has got harder since COVID, but there are encouraging examples that I hope you feel inspired to imitate. And Cole and Kappa are joining hands to support you to do this, so that together we can all help achieve the third target of the fourth Sustainable Development Goal and see equal access for women across the different types of TVET, so that women become as well off as men and countries like yours become as well off as developed nations. Thank you again for inviting me to be a part of your conference. And I look forward to hearing how it goes and to being a part of your journey as Cole and Kappa collaborate with you.